Why, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 612. That's 612 of the Agostino Zynga Show. Hope you're doing fine wherever this podcast may find you. I hope you're doing fine. I'm doing pretty good, all things considered. As you can tell, I've got that weird, just brush my teeth kind of taste in my mouth after just finished my breakfast. I'm starting to now brush my teeth after every meal. Previously, I'd only brush my teeth in the mornings and before I go to bed, but now to improve my teeth health and to make sure I've got a um, a good idea where my teeth are prior to me heading out to K- fuck Korea prior to me heading out to Turkey and get my little Turkish chompers done I'm going to make sure I brush my teeth and get I'm also going to get a little bit of a spring wash inside there to get everything cleaned out and see where they sit because I'm not too sure if I'm going to need to get my teeth filed down and these artificial chompers to get placed in there so I can look like some guy who just popped out one look with my double chompers I'm not too sure if I need them so I'm going to be doing extra bit of tooth care, extra bit of teeth care, extra bit of mouth hygiene to make sure that I know where I'm at before I commit to the flipping Turkish chompers, but, or the Turkish delights as I like to call them, but I'm probably going to end up getting them anyway, regardless. I've got a big thing about teeth and about making them just look mad, wide and fucking massive and long. So I'm probably going to end up getting them. So when I come back on this pod and I've got an amazing, an amazing Johnny Bravo-esque smile, please do not say a word. Don't say anything, okay? Just pretend like it's not happening. Just pretend like it's not happening. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. But anyway, it's a jam-packed show for you today. Loads of things to talk about. Loads of things to get involved in. And hopefully you guys enjoy this absolute nonsense i have to talk about on a weekly basis thank you thank you thank you call a bit of carmax here keep me going but yeah let's roll in let's bloody roll in so first things first interesting news somewhat surprising news courtesy of mixmag concerning the great and the legendary glastonbury festival it looks like Glastonbury have to put their prices up for next year and I guess for subsequent years because I'm assuming they're probably not getting enough people through the gates in general. Um, maybe demand has gone sky high and they want to capitalise on it. Maybe the cost of production is even more than it was prior, especially now with Brexit, especially now in a post-pandemic world. Whatever's happened, they've hiked up the price and people on the internet, especially on social media, are not happy because if you know anything about Glastonbury, you'll know Glastonbury is a very... Um, unique sort of UK festival because it's quite family orientated. Um, there's a lot of people there who have kind of gone there since they were little children all the way up to the adult years. The people that go there with friends, it's a yearly tradition. Um, and it's just something that people kind of do a lot here in the UK, like on a consistent basis, that people are kind of tied in and kind of feel like they're part of the Glastonbury family. And the owners or the founders, the people that kind of do Glastonbury Festival are also very personable. They communicate a lot on social media. It feels like you're supporting somebody that you know. It's got a very personal kind of... um, real person vibe you know how a lot of festivals are just faceless and it's just a brand sex or another brand glastonbury actually feels like somebody's kind of doing it off in the back of a fucking beer mat you know somewhere in their kitchen when you know most likely it is a big organization they've got loads of employees it's a serious business but it does have that kind of diy hands-on feel so when people see these kind of price increases when company like that it kind of comes across a bit weird but you know i'm i'm not flipping naive enough to expect these places to never put their prices up especially with the changing world that we're living at the moment so i'm sure there's some meaning and some kind of rationale behind it but again if you're a punter and you're seeing it go up 26 percent and you're already squeezing your belt energy prices are where they are at the moment you're flipping weekly shop like mine has gone up to to justify spending an extra what 50 60 quid on a ticket to go to glastonbury probably isn't it so we continue it says the price of a Glastonbury ticket has risen by 26% concerning many avid um, uh, concerning sorry, many avid festival goers with Emily Evis blaming challenging times for the increase. Challenging times is a bit vague, Emily. You've got to come with some more stuff though. You've got to like really break it down for people. That's what I think places should do. Don't get me wrong. It's not their business to, but maybe to kind of really give them some explanation and to maybe have people rally behind you, maybe breaking it down to the minutia and saying, hey, this is why we have to increase this thing that we bought, you know, a few years ago 
has now gone up this way and we need to obviously account for that increase because money isn't coming out the things that we're making whatever it may be just break it down a little bit more a little bit more itemized people maybe would have some more sympathy it continues tickets from general sale in 2020 had been priced at 265 pounds with a five pound booking fee with a minor rise to 280 due to inflation when the event hit resale in 2022 but for the 2023 edition tickets will cost £335 plus a £5 booking fee. That's pretty insane. They even have to keep the booking fee on there because they need it. Do you know what I mean? That's, I'm guessing the processing fee. I'm not sure how booking fees actually work. If it's a processing fee for the platform that you're, that you're hosting the ticket sale on, because I'm assuming most of these places, you use the already services built in. They kind of like, like, like an RA or like a DICE. They've got their system already in place and then you kind of build on top of that. So you have to use their service with Malaki. So obviously that booking fee goes to that and the processing fee, blah, blah, blah. I'm not sure, probably, yeah, whatever else. But they have to keep the so they they're putting it up to free five free free five and they're still keeping the booking fee. Festival girls have taken to social media to share concerns over the hike, with a Twitter user saying, "I love Glastonbury, but for many people, this is just unfamable at this time. It is unfamable at this time, but this is the only time they could do it and justify it because we're going through what we're going through. It's a weird time we're living in an economy, right? Like everyone's losing money, everyone's bills are getting." you know, more, or are getting more, are getting higher. Everyone's expenses are maybe going down to, to accommodate for the bills going up. But if you sell something, you kind of have to sell it for a bit more to account for what you're having to pay for in terms of your day to day. It's just what it is, isn't it? So it's a weird, it's a, it's a bit of a quagmire. It's a bit of a strange position to be in, but it does make some sense if you kind of take your emotion and your love for the festival and you kind of take a bit of a bird's eye view from it and kind of look at it from the outside in. It does make sense why they'd want to raise it now as opposed to any other time in like a boom time. It doesn't really make more sense. But the funny thing for me that really makes me laugh about this whole thing, if I'm not mistaken, let me just do a quick Google. But let me see. Primavera ticket prices. This is why for me... UK festivals are always going to be second fiddle to European festivals, just for me personally. I know some of you guys may disagree and may think I'm talking out my ass, but for me personally, I think UK festivals are grossly overrated. I haven't been to um, Glastonbury myself. I've heard some really good things. I know some people within my social group um, who have gone to Glastonbury and have only good things to say about the place. I love that it's got this community of people who still communicate with each other and still hang out with each other and are friends and have developed into being you know, close closer than family members they go to each other's weddings and stuff and baby showers and all that stuff and it's clearly fostered a really close-knit community that hang out even outside of the festival that's a pretty much of a good sign of a good festival similar to like a good workplace if you have people that are going on holiday together or attending each other's weddings it shows that you have a flipping good community there right you have a good ambiance um, you, you don't have a high turnover all that stuff but all that said and done all of that said and done Let's not lie and say UK festivals are value for money because they're not. They're not value for money. A good example being this on the screen, Primavera Sound. I've been to Primavera Sound now, what? We've been there, I think it's two times, not three. I think it might be two or three, I'm not too sure. But either way, me and my friend went to Primavera Festival for the first time together and we absolutely loved it. And imagine this is the first sort of holiday festival thing that we're going with together alone and stuff. So, you're, you're, you know, you, you're not too sure if this is going to be a test of your friendship, but that's going to not work. The city's great for that kind of vibe. We stayed and we did two experiences. We stayed in a hotel first. And I think yeah, we went twice. We stayed in a hotel before and then we stayed in an Airbnb and both experiences were absolutely phenomenal. And the festival itself is great. It maybe has one of the best lineups of any festival I've ever seen in my entire life. Right. If I put this on the screen now and say pre my Vera Sound um, Barcelona uh, lineup right for 2022, and I get that on the screen, and then we try to um, understand why I think UK festivals are really are overrated in terms of what they offer you, especially in terms of price. Look at look, and this is not even including festivals that you might go to like in like places like i don't know like in portugal or like smaller ones in places like copenhagen or croatia or other parts of central europe or maybe a festival you might go to in central america south america there's so much value for money out there that it really is a disservice for you to only attend flipping what's it face um uk festivals so this is a okay let me get this on the screen actually this is a copy image address let's put it on a new tab and let's get this line up, right? So we can see who played. This is from last year, right? Primavera Sound. Why is it not loading? Come on, get up here. 
This is from last year, right? And look how amazing this lineup is already. And this really shows you I think the value for money is insane. I already saw the price on here for next year's Primavera Sound Festival. Um, from the 1st to the 3rd, you've got... Is that it? 1st to the 3rd? Why does that look look like it's, it's, it's a shorter festival? Is that Barcelona? Primavera Sound Barcelona? Is that the one, right? Primavera Sound, Primavera Sound, Primavera Sound. Hmm. Why does it seem so short the days? Or maybe... Can you ask your tradition from... Okay, I don't know. It's usually five days, but it doesn't matter. Regardless, the tickets for Primavera Sound Festival, basic ticket, 260 euros. 260 euros. They've got a ticket here with an installment plan that's only five euros more than the regular ticket. So I'm assuming they're going to break up into maybe one to... Was it how many installments? Maybe two to three, maybe four. I'm not too sure. A VIP full festival ticket is 480 euros. And then you've got a full festival ticket. What's this one there on the right? Um, then you've got here. Whoops. Then you've got here a full ticket to Barcelona and Madrid uh, Primavera Sound for that amount. Absolutely crazy. Is, do they mean they're splitting it? So they're having a festival in Barcelona and in Madrid. Is that, is that what they're basically trying to say? That's pretty sick. So I guess they're going to split the weekend. So instead of having two weekends in Barcelona... One weekend's going to be in Barca and one weekend's going to be in fucking Madrid. So one, yeah, the, the Barcelona one's from the 1st to the 3rd and then the Madrid one's from the 8th to the 10th, it looks like. Pretty pretty amazing. But regardless, the lineup from last year, look at what you're getting for your money, right? 260 euros. Look who's playing. Look look at the bang for your buck that you're getting. Um, on the first day, on the first day, first weekend, headlining, Massive Attack Pavement Taming Parlor. Second day, Beck, The National, The Strokes, for third day, Gorillas, Georgia Smith, Nick Cave, entirely created. Not, not including all the amazing artists underneath, right? Not including all of them. I see flipping Beach House, Callum Palachek, DJ Harvey, for goodness sake, right? Absolutely incredible. Then on the second weekend, if you didn't like that one, headliners. Dua Lipa, Gorillas, Interpol, Tyler the Creator on the first day. Second day, Lord, Massive Attack, The Strokes. The third day on the second weekend, Georgia Smith, Megan Thee Stallion, Phoenix, Tame Impala, yeah, yeah, yeahs. Are you nuts? That's supreme value for money. Now, don't get me wrong. That somebody also has good lineups, but for 260 or now 335 pounds, just to be in a small village somewhere in the UK where, you know, it's, it's good because you can basically take as many, you know, as much booze and drugs as you want with you to a certain extent. I get that, Malaki, and it's not far from where you actually live. You have to get on a plane or anything. Fair enough, but I'd much rather go to a sunnier climate be able to eat some tapas, be able to get a bit of a tan, meet some cool and interesting people, have a good time, have a boogie, enjoy myself, um, listen to some good music, especially because Primavera also, they book a lot of people that I necessarily wouldn't listen to. So go to some stages and listen to people that I wouldn't check out, hear them play live, fall in love with them and want to stream and buy all their music and buy their merch. Much rather do that. But anyway, we continue. Another user said that, Get that glass and breeze a huge endeavor and that costs everything are rising and that the festival industry as a whole is struggling after COVID. But with the ticket prices going up to £340 per person before food, travel and drink, it's clear the festival is now almost exclusively for the wealthy, which is what's happened for the most part. I think I said it to you guys already. I watched this video, right? And this is a good example. This is a good reason to get this video back up here. I was watching this video of kind of music guys playing that fucking burning man and it really blew my mind because again i have a small social group of people online who i know who go to burning man and speak very highly of it right and they flip and do loads of posts online and they've got little community online that exists there same with goes to gastonbury so and then also because i was obsessed with startups um i also kind of knew uh, pre sorry. Um, I also knew Burning Man to be something that a lot of people within that kind of sex self actualization startup VC adjacent kind of world to be a fan of, right? And they always spoke very, very highly of it in terms of its transformative effects, in terms of it being a place where you can meet different people, um, in, in terms of it being a place where you can maybe open your horizon, try different drugs, um, just let go of all your, you know, um, worldly things that you do on the outside, no phone because there's no network over it and all that good stuff. All that things was really something I've heard of a lot when it comes to Burning Man. But now, suddenly Burning Man has turned into just another stop on the influencer world tour you know how you have these things like paris fashion week you have um you have uh oh, what's that thing called you have the flipping uh, freeze art fair you have festival season in general 
you have maybe places like DC10. There's a few places on online where they kind of meet, they kind of go down the roller decks of these kind of influencer world tour type events. And now Burning Man has just turned into one of those type of things. So it wouldn't surprise me if they have flipping places there that are flipping sponsored by certain brands and whatnot and all this other nonsense. So let me just get this. Actually, I've got, I ain't got my headphones on so I can actually hear what these guys are saying. But it's actually quite interesting because I saw this clip of kind of music playing on fucking Burning Man. And it was quite interesting to see that it essentially looked like Tomorrowland. It looks very commercial. And again, I don't, I don't have a problem with Tomorrowland. I like big festivals. I like big productions. I like the fact that there is this kind of segment in dance music that exists where if you have some money and you're a baller and you want to have a bit of VIP treatment and you want to go to a rave but you don't want to be slugging it with all us normies down there whilst we're doing our bumps of care, you can kind of sit in your own little um, section. You can sit in this elevated thing where you're looking down upon us like we're, like we're not fucking worthy. I love all that stuff. I think all that stuff is fucking amazing. But, but... But there's no denying that the DIY rough around the edges image of Burning Man that once existed has completely gone. Just take a look at this flipping video of Kind of Music and me, Rampa and Adam Port playing at Burning Man earlier on. The fact that they have this streamed and it's video recorded and stuff just shows you how things have changed. But yeah, you you get the point, right? Loads of um, loads of normie looking whites enjoying themselves, dancing around, um, swaying from left to right, like they would be at any other festival that exists, right? So no real difference in that regard. But it is quite interesting to see how Caucasian it is, number one, which is obviously understandable, but also how it looks like any other regular festival. If you didn't recognize the dusty decks from the sand kicking up all over the place in that flipping Nevada desert, you wouldn't really know it was Burning Man. You would just think it's any other, you think it's flipping adult Coachella or something. But it's just what is, that's effectively what it's turned into. And if you're aware of Burning Man, you'll know they have a lot of installment plans and a lot of systems in place to allow people who don't have a lot of money to go there. But still, essentially, you're going to need to find your, find a way to get to the Nevada desert somehow. You're going to need to find a way to kind of get yourself to the location somehow so it's still going to cost you some amount of money no amount of kind of scrimping and saving is going to make you go there for fucking 200 dollars. it's not going to happen so it's always been kind of for the wealthy and it's interesting to see a festival like glastonbury which is i thought something that a lot of people would say is a bit more grassroots has kind of gone that way unfortunately co-organizers emily avis responded to an announcement on twitter she said as following we have tried very hard to minimize the increase in the prices of the ticket but we're facing enormous rises in the cost of running this vast show whilst recovering from the huge financial impact of two years with our festival because of covid so she's basically saying not being able to run a business for two years has made it so they have to put up the price next year which makes a lot of sense because i remember someone saying i forgot who it was but maybe someone that does a really big festival said no festival actually makes money or profit or i, I forgot which one is someone says something like that like like they don't actually make money they just break even but the whole point of it is to get a lot of brand and sponsorship and whatnot to kind of fund other things that you want to do or to kind of allow yourself to give yourself a platform so you can have maybe a voice in the industry that you're trying to break into, wherever it may be. That's basically what you're doing it as. So you can imagine all these festivals, especially here in the UK, they're breaking even every year. But because they're providing such good times for people, they're launching careers, they're introducing flipping fans to new artists they would never have seen. They're just maybe adding to the local flipping economy. They're providing a fun place for their friends to come and hang out. Whatever it may be, it's going to give you some sense of... Um, um, it's going to give you some sense of willingness to go out and do it again next year because it's so much fun, even though you're not making that money because of all the other things that are coming on top of it. But if you have two years of not making absolutely anything, but then you're still having to pay for stuff in the background, because I'm assuming that's what happens. I don't think those people that, you know, hire out equipment or who do the production or wherever else that work at festivals were just not billing people. They had their own bills to pay also. So you're also having to pay that stuff whilst you're not kind of ready to restart, whilst you have no idea where when you're going to be able to restart it must be really 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 a confusing time so it kind of makes sense why they're putting it up but again like i said i would have never to be fair i would have been tempted before to have paid the price that they had prior which was what the prior price was 280 maybe would have tempted me but still the fact that i've got a taste of primavera and the fact that i go on my techno tourism jaunts quite often i probably would have never followed through but now it's 335 
get the get the f out of here with a five pound booking fee i don't care what happened in the world i'm not going but it continues the 50 pound deposit on ticket sales in november will be the same as ever with the balance not due until april so she's basically saying hey you're only gonna pay 50 now relax you're gonna pay the, the, the rest of it the whatever or the 280 or whatever it was has left <laughs> sometime in april god damn it and as always there will be opportunities for many thousands of people to come as volunteers or as part of the crew so if you want to rave you have to work for free or try and get a job there <laughs> It is incredibly challenging times. We want to continue to bring you the best show in the world and provide our charities with funds which are more vital than ever. And we are always and hugely appreciative of our ongoing support. According to The Guardian, 200, the 2023 um, ticket for Reading and Leeds Festival is cheaper than the 2022 ticket. However, Green Man and End of the Road have also increased their prices. So the Re 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 Reading and Leeds kind of have to because every year some headliner flipping drops out. And in general, it's full of flipping ketted up peeled up 18 and 19 year olds unless you're flipping crystalia you probably shouldn't be going there anyway so it makes sense why they're going to put their tickets down so that normal people who probably would never go to reading at least because they know it's full of flipping kids who lie about their age would end up going there but glastonbury is a whole different affair the what i'm thinking though what be, might be interesting at the back of this what i'm thinking i just thought about this now Maybe this might mean next year we'll see an increase in all those videos people post of them flipping, sneaking into Glastonbury. You know, there was that famous guy, did one recently, that was really cool, where he essentially found like an underpass in some lake or some river thing underneath a gate that was looked, that looked really gnarly. I was like, look, you have to really like festivals to be willing to crawl in literal muck to watch flipping, I don't know who's going to be playing. What's his fucking name? Professor Green sing some of his best hits or something. You have you have to be kidding me if you think I'm going to go and do that. But big up everyone that did do it. But I wonder if we're going to see a lot more of that happening. Obviously on an official side of things, that like content creation, but also people just saying, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to go to the festival and they're just jumping and for the sake of it. They're not even jumping because they want to get into the festival. They're jumping because, fuck it, just going to jump in for the clout. And also people jumping because they literally have no money. But I equate going to the festival with no money and attempting to jump it, especially one that's like outside of, the, of fucking London or it's not already near you live and you have to camp there. I equate that the same as those psycho girls that go to restaurants and try to get sugar daddy to pay for their meals. There's been a few of them on social media who've been posting these things where they're, they're like eating and they're fucking turning their head every two minutes like they're fucking Xavi at his peak at Barcelona watching their shoulders to see if they can catch the eye of some bloody rich guy so you can pay for their bloody dinner. That is that that is meant you have some you have some mental issues. That is that that is a cry for help. That is a red flag if a girl's going to a restaurant and you know and risking the embarrassment and the shame of not having money to pay so that she can get some old guy to pay for a meal. You're insane. In the same way going to Glastonbury with a backpack full of fucking you know ketamine and straws and cups and some boxes and some socks and whatnot and some wet wipes with no idea of how you're gonna get in but hoping you're gonna jump over the gate. You have something wrong with you. But I'm still gonna watch your content. I'm going to click like and I'm going to click subscribe. <laughs> you know what I mean? I might believe your comment as well if it's good. I might even give you a super thanks if I like the content. So keep doing your things, especially you crazy white boys out there. I want to see that thing rag one. But again, thoughts and feelings go out to everybody that's going to be suffering through this price hike because that is legitimately wild to pay £335 to go to Glastonbury when you could pay 260 euros to go to barcelona not including the flights not including the accommodation i know but still to go see some of the best bands in the world in one of the best cities in the world doesn't make any sense in my opinion but again what do i know so we're gonna continue even though for some reason my flipping yeah so we're gonna continue and quickly actually i just saw this pop over my inbox and it looks like supreme have got a new collaboration with Sawarski and Vans coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow, or at the time of recording, it should be on a Thursday when you eventually hear this. But it looks like Vans and Supreme have linked up and they've added a little bit of Sawarski crystals on the uppers of these Vans and they look pretty fantastic. So it's a courtesy of Supreme. So follow Supreme Sawarski Vans. This for Supreme will release 
a new version of the Vans Old School. The shoe features a premium suede and canvas upper with Swarovski crystal studded pattern, leather lining, insole, vulcanized waffle outsole and embroidered logo on the heel. Have I ever said to you many times on the show already that I really, really like Supreme's product descriptions? I think they have some of the best product descriptions on the market right now, without doubt. The detail they go into things, the fact that they flip and break down the components and the features of every item they put down, basically makes you feel like you're already you know you're already clued in or clued up even though you have absolutely no knowledge of what you're wearing and you're only wearing it because you're so fucking tired of creator wearing it back in the day it still gives you some sort of false sense of knowledge or information or intelligence that you clearly don't have so i love it i love that they're doing it for the kids so big up supreme and Sawalski for that it'll be available on october the 20th and available in japan november the 19th so quite as soon after right now it's quite it's like nearly a month after it's going to be released out in japan i'm not really too sure why that is actually there's a little asterisk there as to why but you can't actually click on anything i don't know why that is it's releasing so late in japan but either way the vans themselves are absolutely incredible looking and i'm also liking the fact that in these lookbook pictures they take these sort of lifestyle pictures they clearly give it to guys in a team who are part of the supreme family who actually wear them day to day and then they take a picture of them after i'm not sure if that's a wear test that's part of the shoot but i love that the fact that the shoes actually look a bit worn in they kind of you know are worn in a style that matches whoever's wearing it so you can see them worn in different ways and they just have that you know they don't have that kind of plastic sort of like sterile kind of like on the white table in the white cube kind of feel that most sort of product shots have i really do appreciate it like that from there i'm not going to lie i'm not going to lie in the slightest so it's a picture of the old school in purple one of my favorite colors i think the purple and the red so far i've seen are my favorites and if you zoom into the actual upper on this kind of pattern which you usually have this sort of checkered board supreme classic pattern on the checkered board they've got all these little Sawalski crystals um kind of started on there now Sawalski crystals i'm guessing you know not all crystals are created equal and a crystal isn't a diamond but still that Sawalski clarity that shine that sparkle on the upper just gives a really basic shoe that you would obviously wear because you've got nothing else in your wardrobe because they're the most comfortable shoes in your wardrobe to wear it gives them a little bit more of a sparkle and a shine the what for one thing i want to know do people exist out there who wear vans like they wear like air force ones or like they wear uggs because when i used to wear vans especially old schools especially skate high especially half cabs um especially rowleys and stuff i never found them comfortable they just looked really good but they were never shoes that you would wear saying oh yeah i'm gonna wear this when i go to paris and i'm gonna walk around the whole city you don't really do that you wear you wear them because they look good and because they match your outfit in a way or they complement what you're wearing but you don't wear them under the you know under the fucking illusion that they're somehow hoka oneones or something or they're um what are those shoes that everyone's wearing now those cloud shoes or whatever they're called i don't know what they are but they're not a running shoe they're not a really you know soft sole shoe you feel every single you know street fucking crevice and crack as you're walking down a pavement but i'm sure that some people out there that exist who actually wear vans day to day and they make me feel like slippers to them if that's the fact please let me know in the chat i would love to know or sorry in the comments down below if that's the case because i can't ever picture myself wearing a pair of vans like you know people wear flipping air force ones or really soft shoes like crocs and stuff it doesn't make any sense to me but the, yeah, the purple and reds look fantastic here. Really, really well done. Um, obviously, the red, you know, the contrast of that guy wearing the indigo jeans as well, obviously look really nice. The browns look fairly decent also. They kind of remind me a little bit of the jowned vans that he did a while back ago. I think they were brown and green, two different colorways. But for me, the purple and the red are definitely the standout colors in this going together. But it's just interesting that they dropped these like one day before they're actually meant to be dropped like you know what i mean there's no kind of um news beforehand i didn't really see any leaks about it and they're just going to drop it one day after announcing it this kind of feels like the old supreme is coming back again i wonder if this is something that tremaine's doing going forward with the with the van stuff or with the clothing in general maybe this is an implementation he put together where maybe with footwear collaborations especially when it's stuff like you know stuff that you know they're going to do every season like a vans or a nike collab instead of putting it out ahead of time they're just going to drop it one day ahead and then that's it and it's going to drop the next day so it's going to feel like an old school release in a little bit maybe that's the thing because in a roundabout way i've not seen these leaks but usually most supreme footwear things leak anyway especially the nikes right we've got an idea of what the nikes are going to be those like air maxes that came that we saw in all white leaked in a few pages they're most likely going to come out soon and you know they're going to probably come in different colors but 
they usually do that often. Do you know what I mean? Like when it comes to Supreme, like pe people always end up leaking images of what they do in terms of footwear. But it's quite nice that we've got a kind of an old school approach with these and they're sort of like dropping the next day. The black and whites actually pair are quite nice because that's, that's a classic Vans old school colorway with the checkerboard on there. And you're used to probably seeing this sort of, you know, makeup, um, you know, displayed on the Comme de Garçons, you know, Vans that they put together and whatever it may be. But I like this sort of little upgrade that they've done with these. They look really, really good. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually a big fan of these in the black and white. But, you know, as per usual, when it comes to you sort of collaborations with me, I tend to not go for the... Oh, it's a little detail too that makes... It's the details for me that make sense and that really puts Supreme above all other streetwear brands. You remember I mentioned ages ago in this pod that I've got a real kind of bee in my bonnet about stores um, and about, you know, sites that cover some news concerning sneakers and streetwear, how they have a tendency to not relace the shoes. A big sort of culprit for it is actually Nike themselves. Nike themselves will just take the shoe from the factory floor and just take a picture of it. They won't relace it to make it look good or to, you know, to kind of compliment the shoe, nothing. It'll just be like laced horribly how it comes straight out from the factory. But look what Supreme have done. They've done the lace system that i like to do or that most sneakerheads like to do if you're really about that life where the laces on the left hand shoe the lace goes over on that side and then on the right hand shoe it goes on it goes over do you get what i mean if you can get what i mean kind of like it kind of goes like in that kind of v shape but the lace that goes to to your left on the left hand side of the shoe will go on the top and the lace that goes to your right will go on the right hand side it's a tiny little thing that only the most tismed induced um you know anal person that cares about the stuff would, would care about but i clearly see it you know same way i see this little sparkle here and clearly it's something that they pay attention to and i think that really is what separates them from all the other brands these little things that they care about and these little things that they pay attention to but i really like those and then i think there's the next picture that shows the entire collection all together with all the other colorways and obviously they got this and there's another good touch too the embroidered supreme um logo on the back of the heel is also a really nice touch because if you have if you're like me it doesn't matter if it's a collaboration or whatever you're gonna wear your your van shoes into the ground i know i've done with previous iterations of supreme vans the best thing about them especially you know because they usually end up reselling for a lot if you want to really flex on people and give them a heart attack is to wear these into the ground play football with them skating them go to raves in them and muck around in them and people will be like looking oh my god i can't believe you but it doesn't really matter so the fact that they've got the logo embroidered on the back of the heel it kind of adds to the longevity of the shoe because usually if it's screen printed or it's whatever else they put they do when they heat press it or it's a vinyl application those things can fall off rather quickly and then you know you're left with nothing but i'm assuming once you wear this in the crystals will probably fall off all over the place this will probably get all muddy and beat up it will end up looking far better because people will be able to see these little tiny hits of crystals where which ones are left you know shining off of your shoe that'd be pretty insane to see um so yeah, i'm a big fan of these and it also kind of harkens back to the golden era of sneaker culture in it right back in the day when people used to get air force ones and turn the, the swoosh into a gucci print put crystals on it paint it all that sort of good stuff so it's nice to see this kind of application but yeah the brands are quite nice but for me the two colorways i'd get just because you're probably not going to get the same sort of makeup in these colorways will definitely be the purples and the red though two in the middle are definitely ones that are kind of stand out to me in this regard but i do like them all i do like them all so big up supreme when they come out get them if you can if not you're going to be crying if not you're going to be crying i just had i just had the most aggressive flipping um delivery person ever just knock on my on my door man bloody hell i get it because you know the building that i live in for whatever reason the concierge downstairs just doesn't want to open the door to delivery people I'm not sure if this is a thing that happens in most buildings, but I always assumed if you're a concierge, part of what you do is opening the door for the postman, opening the door for the, what you call it, for the trades people that come in, if they're going to repair something, you know, someone might not be, I don't know, whatever, just people are going to even repair the building, unless they have a code or a key, I'm not too sure, but you just assume you're just going to be the point of contact there, but I guess for whatever reason, some of them get given the remit that they shouldn't be opening doors to delivery people, and that because the door entry system works, in a way it doesn't really it's meant to be linked to my phone and they're meant to call you directly if they're outside but usually it works when it wants to work kind of thing so when it doesn't ring through they're obviously stuck outside and they you know they want to flip and deliver the parcels and they keep it moving and then they can see the guy sitting in there but he doesn't want to open it so when they so if they get the chance to call you and you put your name on the thing when they call you they're hot 
So the guy called me thinking I was at home earlier, shouted at me, I wasn't in. Come back in later and when he knocked the door, I legitimately thought it was flipping MI5 or something. Come to take all my two CBs or whatnot. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? He was like, relax, brother. Jesus Christ. I was like, take it easy. But yeah, anyway, what can you do? Um, getting back to the topics at hand, um, I wanted to cover this story, courtesy of High Snobiety, regarding the second collaboration between Dr. Martins and Rick Owens, which looks like it's going to be a long-lasting collaboration or like a long-lasting um, agreement between the both brands. Because I thought it was a bit of a one-off because I kind of thought it was a really big coup that Dr. Martins ended up getting someone like to Rick Owens to agree to a collaboration because I had the feeling ever since the Adidas collab, he kind of took a step back from doing collabs with like big, you know, sportswear or footwear manufacturers. Obviously, he does some stuff with Veja now at the moment, that vegan shoe brand, but I thought that might be more of a um, principled, uh, morals kind of lifestyle type thing because he might be vegan himself or vegetarian or whatever it is. And maybe like that makes sense. But ever since the Adidas collab, I feel like Rick Owens hasn't necessarily wanted to dip his toe back into that kind of pool. What can I think of? That's another thing that kind of defeats that purpose. I can't think of anything else. Has he got, no, he's got coverage with Converse, hasn't he? So I can't really say that. Maybe the Converse one's a different one, but he hasn't really gone for that kind of highbrow Adidas Nike thing again. He's just kind of stuck to the, you know, the other parts of footwear industry, like the Converse, like the Dr. Martins. And I have to say, this second iteration of the collaboration between Rick Owens and Dr. Martins might be my favorite. The first one was pretty standard, I felt like, in terms of an appeal, because it had a particular kind of upper that if you're used to wearing Rick Owens footwear, you would have known what that's about. I'm not really, I forgot the name of the shoe, but it was based on something, the lacing system. So it was kind of essentially just a 1460 Dr. Martin with a zip on the side, a really chunky sort of like industrial zip with these extra laces kind of wrapped around the outside of it that kind of made it look like um, a kind of an, uh, a Rick Owens shoe that you would have maybe seen before. I'm actually going to get a picture of the first collaboration here up on the screen so you have a reference for it. But if I'm not mistaken, I think it was called the Bexley or something or the Beaksley, I think. Was it Bexley? It's 1460, right? But I forgot what the actual model of it was called, but it was pretty kind of standard in terms of the appeal and the look of it. Because if you're used to wearing a sort of Rick Owens shoe, you would have seen something similar to this um, featured on other Rick Owens that they put out. And I actually like the, the flip on the black laces, but obviously the off kind of grey colour laces look far better, but you can also do them with the black. So essentially it's a 1460 classic kind of Dr. Martin shoe. It might have a slightly thicker midsole, maybe, than the classic Dr. Martens, or maybe I'm just used to mine being really thin because I wore them out. And then on the upper, it's kind of got this concealed um, zipper that you can't really see here on the top where they where it they kind of zips up a little bit here. I'm pretty sure it zips up on the inside. And then there's these eyelets here on the outside, these metal hooks that you kind of lace the shoe around that kind of copies. Um, yeah, that's what it's called, the, the Dr. Martin's 1460 Bex Rick Owen laced. That kind of copies, obviously, another Rick Owen's boot that they put out. I forgot what it's called. What's it based on again? It's based on something. Rick Owen's was it based on, is it, is it or inspiration? Let's see if someone has got it. What was it inspired by? What was the original shoe? It's a shoe that they've got in their lineup already. Okay, no one's no one's got it featured here, but I'm sure somebody might have spoken about it. But it's a pretty decent shoe regardless. But I have to be honest and say, I think this second iteration might be my favorite so far. I'm not going to lie. Obviously, the model himself kind of makes it a little bit special by, you know, basically what the guy looks like. He's covered in these amazing tattoos. He's got this cape on and these gloves. And these, um, I think they're like 1490s, if I'm not mistaken. I used to work at Dr. Martin, so I kind of know my Dr. Martin's in and out. I think there's a 1490s. Um, the, the 14 whole ones, the kind of ones that come up to you, just a bit below your knee. And then the other classic ones, just the thicker laces and the thicker sole. And obviously that kind of may be lending to the fact that everybody's wearing these flipping double sole, thick Dr. Martin Jaden boots that I have at the moment. Um, I've kind of worn, I've worn through two pairs all the way through from just raving and going out. These tattoos are really cool, man. I've kind of worn through the two pairs. So to see somebody wearing another one as well, and to see them done in the Rick Owens situation is quite nice with these metal eyelets and these thick laces that go around the front of them and that extra long tongue that looks pretty cool. So I'm a big fan of those. And then actually see the actual shoe itself. As you can see here, you've got the upper, which is a sort of like tumbled leather all over the top, which is going to be really soft. 
I'm assuming it's leather. I'm not, I'm not assuming it's not vegan. It's got a double sole on the outsole. You've got these metal eyelet eye loops as well, which help to kind of stop all the fraying and the weirdness on the laces when you're tying them or wearing them day in, day out. And these extra thick um, Rick Owen spec kind of laces with this kind of weird off gray color, whatever he does with these laces that he puts the kind of application on there and an extra long tongue also. So I'm a big fan of it. And of course, the piece de resistance is the little zip on the outside, actually, which is interesting because on most Rick Owen shoes, especially sneakers, the zip is always on the inside, which is kind of easy to kind of put it on. So you can kind of squeeze your foot in there because usually this little front bit towards the bottom of the tongue is kind of tight. So it's kind of hard well, it is for me to get my fat foot in there. So having a zip on the inside helps to kind of alleviate some of that tightness. But this zip on here on the outside is quite cool because you don't necessarily see it on the outside, like I said before. And I do like the fact that it's always a chunky zip. Um, maybe it's a, is it a Riri zip? I don't think it's a Riri. It probably is a classic YK, uh, YKK zip. But those Riri zips, those Japanese made zips are fucking amazing. There's another one too that they use, right? Um, that's Italian. I forgot the manufacturer of it that they use also. That I think I might have a jacket from Flipping Rick Owens that has that zip on it. But yeah, I'm a big fan of that. I love the look of it. Um, all black on the upper. And then on the 1490, you've got this kind of pony hair type upper. Um, we've got classic loops classic eyelets with the metal eyelets here on the top towards these kind of main holes and then all the way up you've got these little hoops that go all the way around and i'm a fan of this also so that's a really 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 aggressive shoe but i'm a big fan of these i'm not going to lie it's just interesting to me that these don't ever appear on a runway i wonder if that's a an agreement he's put into place or because they had issues producing it because usually when there's collaborations, you would imagine you want to get as much eyes and ears on it as possible. So you just implement them on the runway like they do with Undercover, like they do with Sakai in terms of their Nike collabs. And obviously, Rico has did it previously with his first Adidas collaboration. But you don't really see the Dr. Martin's features on the runway. You've seen the Converse's feature on the runway, but I haven't seen the Dr. Martin shoe. I wonder why that is. And they are Rico Owens. They're not Dark Shadow either. So it's not like they're like a subsidiary brand or like the... What's the, what the, what's the word called? There's a word for it where they call the fucking, um, the cheaper stuff, but it's not even that. It's clearly something else. But yeah, the zipper looks fucking substantial. I'm a big fan of stuff like this because if they're, if they're adding zippers that thick, that kind of detailing, a zipper that you normally find in a jacket and they put it on the side of a boot, it means the quality is going to be supreme. And of course, the quality of Dr. Martens are always really high anyway. Um, it's very rare that we had people coming into a store saying, oh, my shoe fell apart. Maybe because of a manufacturing issue, but not because of a quality issue. Do you know what I mean? Maybe whoever's on the, whoever's on the flipping factory floor didn't glue them on properly but the quality of them is always always up 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 there so i'm really keen on these i think they're absolutely brilliant i think they actually look far more interesting than this first collaboration in my opinion even though i do like these and i think they look more i guess wearable to the everyday public maybe the converse is another one too that maybe maybe people might be a fan of but the original ones actually the adidas collaboration are still some of my favorite collabs uh let's see rick owens adidas that was actually and it's actually one of my favorite looks too on the runway i think they might have a picture of the kid who was wearing the shoes on the runway but i think the picture on the runway is one of my favorite um pictures of uh, rick owens model wearing something obviously that's him at the end of the show but the shoe itself i thought was awesome um, it's basically this shoe here with these kind of big cloud kind of uh, front foot and four foot at the heel type things they look very similar to like a uh, yeezy actually um so that's pretty cool to see um i'm actually interested why they don't actually have more collaborations between yeezy and what's his name and rick owens anyway in general but i think these look pretty cool can't actually see them on there um let me see someone's got them on a run runway an image of them but i remember there was a model wearing them from time that was one of my favorite pictures yeah this is from this show what is it from spring summer what um from this eBay. it's from spring summer 14 that's when that is yeah that's the shoot that's the one one of my favorite looks from that show was this look here that's basically what i kind of envisioned envision myself to look like when i wear fucking rick owens with this kind of leather um sleeveless kind of vesty thing that's you know elongated with these fucking drop crotch uh pants with the shoes tied up in that particular way that's a supreme look man i'd wear this look right now actually one of my favorite looks ever from spring spring summer 2014 so yeah big up recommends for putting that together hopefully we get to see them soon hopefully we get to see them soon moving on from that we're going to talk about this because i'm i'm interested as to why this brand decided to go in such a 
crazy different direction considering how good the other stuff was so this is courtesy of Hi hype beast and it features no vacancy in makes a comeback with a born cancelled collection first of all i don't understand the term born cancelled and i don't see how that would relate to no vacancy in if you're familiar with no vacancy in you know that one half of no vacancy is tremaine um, e um emery sorry who's obviously now the creative director of supreme and has denim tears and for me from what i understand no vacancy in to be it was kind of like a it was kind of like a you know for lack of a better term like a hotel merch brand that wasn't really much a hotel it was kind of like a it kind of traveled around the world right like like they were kind of they had no home hence the no vacancy in type of thing right you were kind of going all these different places um posted up meeting all these cool and interesting people um maybe they're in cool places maybe they weren't in cool places but you're taking inspiration from all these different um scenarios and scenes and whatnot and feeding them back into the clothes but a lot of it i thought was quite opulent a lot of it i thought was quite cozy was very relaxed um didn't take itself too seriously was easy going and just had a vibe of somebody that kind of knew what's up and kind of you know um didn't really want to show and be too showy too much which is why when i see this instantly it made me just think of very derivative streetwear stuff on the screen we have a couple of varsity jackets um some what you call it i forgot what you call them some combat pants with the bondage kind of tie up where you can kind of adjust the size of how baggy they are based on the zip on the back um without the bondage straps and some sweats and whatnot and i guess they post up outside of a school somewhere i think it looks like and it just looks like a kind of stereotypical you know streetwear brand collection lookbook thing nothing really amazing and the reason why I say this is quite a departure and maybe really bad compared to what they did previously, because if you check the no vacancy in, um, if I check this now on Google, I'm typing, please bear with me. I type like, a, <laughs> not going to say that because I don't want to get cancelled. Uh, it's here. I think it was a Stussy. They did a collaboration with Stuart, if I'm not remembering this correctly. And it had, if I'm not mistaken, ASAP Nast on the lookbook, if I'm not mistaken, also. Let's see if it loads up. There we go. Yeah, I knew I remembered it. So, No Baker Scene had this collaboration they did with Stussy. Now, again, I guess collaborating with Stussy, it's far easier to produce stuff of this standard because they have all the production, manufacturing, um, clothing expertise to kind of get this stuff done on the cheap, to get it done, to quick turnaround and blah, 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 blah. I understand. But... There's no denying this stuff here that you're seeing on the screen that features ASAP Nas wearing a, is that like a corduroy double-breasted jacket suit? Or is that a suede or velvet? I'm not too sure. One of them. It's either velvet, suede, corduroy or something. But it's a really well done double-breasted suit that he's wearing with the logo on the outside, the tag on the outside of the sleeve there looks pretty sick rolling around somewhere and going to a private members club with one of these on your sleeve drinking a flipping negroni at the bar would actually be a bit of a bit of a, a bit of a stunt i'm not gonna lie so you've got this really nice um double-breasted suit you've got a really nice overcoat type vibe going on there maybe the logos are a bit excessive on the back with no vacancy on the back with the hoodie and the pants with the no vacancy on it but this feels a lot more um you know familiar and maybe similar to what you would expect people from that group or from that you know collective of people to be wearing and to be into this makes a lot more sense and to be honest this would be something that maybe you would um connect with a little bit better if you're a prospective uh, buyer of maybe the stuff that they put out there right it's all easy it's all cozy it's all very culturally relevant it's all very aspirational bloody blah, blah 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 but then when you go back to this collection that they put out called born cancelled it's incredibly crap like on another level of rubbish um it's very derivative um it's very forgettable it doesn't really say anything interesting doesn't really offer up anything interesting and if anything this diversion from what they did previously maybe shows that maybe the stussy collab was based in source because they handed it over to the people at stussy who were doing it and the stuff that they're doing on their own is basically them doing it on their own and they've got no real source behind it. Do you know what I mean? This might be part of the reason for it. And don't get me wrong. I have my own personal um, ill feelings towards one of the members of this group that maybe I might be tainting and slighting my oppression of the clothing. But to be completely objective and to kind of remove myself from this, this is not good. 
in the slightest. It's really, really bad, actually. And I'd go as far as saying this might be a waste of fabric. This might be actually contributing to global warming now at the moment. This might be, in, this it might end up choking a turtle somewhere, you know, on some bay somewhere. Do you know what I mean? This might be causing some um, damage that we might not be seeing for generations and generations to come. Come on, man. In 2022, you've got parental advisory flips on t-shirts. Really? Is that what we're doing? You can't be doing it. Even someone like me who hasn't put anything out, if I finally do put something out, I'm not going to go back into the archive and start doing flips of flipping independent truck logos and putting my kind of name or logo on it or doing flips of Coca-Cola or Pepsi and stuff. That's been done. It's boring. You have to kind of move with the times and create things new and fresh and interesting. The pants are quite cool, don't get me wrong, but this t-shirt is so dumb, so derivative. And also, if you're selling it to kids, what does, being, what does born cancelled mean? No kid out there is actually cancelled. There's really, there's very, I can't think of any um, kid out there who's saying the stuff that Nick Fuentes, Candace Owens, and all these flipping right wing blowhards are saying to get themselves cancelled and cry about it. You know what I mean? There's not, I can't think of an 18 year old Stephen Crowder. They don't exist for the most part. If anything, most of the kids that buy um, this brand, I'd imagine, pretty much left-leaning so cancel culture doesn't necessarily apply to them because you know you don't really see a lot of left-leaning liberal people getting cancelled it's mostly people on the right wing so if that's the case who's the last Stephen Crowder that you've seen especially one of color not some crazy white dude in the middle of Ohio no I mean an actual black or brown kid or an Asian kid that's ascribing to some of those crazy ideas that those guys put out that right wing grift I don't see it so the born council thing doesn't make sense and I'm sure there's something more you know um, sly about it something more clued in that I'm not aware of that's a little bit more nuanced and whatnot but just reading from the from the outside being a, a, a fucking normal person who's just reading news online and trying to interpret what he sees same born cancelled on a t-shirt in 2022 is just corny it's lame and it's not very interesting in the slightest in my opinion and like i said it's very disappointing considering how strong this first collaboration was this first collection with stussy or not first but this collection that kind of caught my eye with stussy was really impressive you got here a trench overcoat a blazer and a, su uh, a suit basically is it double breasted or is it cordra i'm not sure, sure one or the other then you've got a sweatsuit um combination and they've done the good thing on a sweatsuit because it was one something that i always hated i've always hated elasticated cuffs on sweatpants if i ever put out sweatpants i'm never going to put out sweatpants with elasticated cuff never no sweatpants with zips no sweatpants with elasticated cuffs and never both it's always this sort of like straight cut that's always how sweatpants should be. Now, they could be baggier in the leg or f slimmer in the leg, but they should never be elasticated. They should never have zips on them unless you're playing football or something. So they've got that. They've also got another hoodie in this kind of off-white um, kind of... Is that a hoodie? Or is that, a, or is that like a pile? Of, I think it's a hoodie. And they've got this nice long sleeve with tie-dye print on the elbows, which is really nice. And then they've got this T-shirt also that I think looks really cool with no Bexy in, written in this kind of nice, um, what do you call it, palm tree effect kind of font on it. So pretty decent collection there with Stussy. Then again, you go back to this stuff that's featured here on Hypebeast and it just looks absolutely pony. Really, really does. Even the pictures are not good. They've got, what's that? Is that an up crotch picture of a girl sitting down on, a pair, on some stairs? What is that? Is he about to pull out his Johnson? Is that like um is that like a CCTV of a sexual assault happening in real life? Like what is that picture? That picture is absolutely nuts. It continues here. It says after taking a break, Tremaine Emeroy and whatever else, um the Novex Zim brand is back on the scene with Born Cancelled. They're relaunching the brand. The trio wanted to exhibit the exhibition of clothing to hold a higher message. Okay, let's see what the message is. Therefore the collection challenges a notion of cancel culture. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is nonsense bro don't give me your fucking political but just put out cool clothes man fuck all this shit anyway it says here specifically the trio makes statements about how counterculture can serve as a, another barrier of entry for those without resources oh okay cool so not only are we suffering under white supremacy not only are we living in a racist world not only are we living in a post-pandemic world not only are we living in a world where there's spiraling um, cost of fucking living and you know student debt and all this kind of nonsense we're also living in a world where there is cancel culture that affects young kids printing t-shirts that's not allowing them to print t-shirts because they don't have the resources to do it excuse me make that make sense in this analysis the collection seeks to exalt up and coming generations in their pursuit of endeavor it says as follows born cancelled is a rebel yell for every kid who has ever cancelled for one mistake kicked out stepped on the picture what kid gets cancelled in real life a kid that beats up someone in the, in the school a bully 
somebody that calls somebody a name. What's the last time you've seen a kid get cancelled, like a child? Maybe a child having sex with a school teacher or something? They don't get cancelled. What is this nonsense? When's the last time you've seen a child get cancelled? Really? Maybe an adult that gets cancelled for somebody unearthing tweets of them when they were 16, which is clearly not cool. But when's the last time you've seen a child, somebody under 18, get cancelled? I can't think of it. This is an absolute nonsense. It continues. Coupled with this rebellious sentiment, the brand's relaunch took uh, takes a look at the DIY approach, brought the brand to fruition. Garments like the Vastage, whatever. Anyway, the prices are the one that's really going to make your head pop out of your flip, your eyes pop out of your head, sorry. Look at the Varsity jacket that I think is derivative and not really that impressive. £485.73. and Really weird how they rounded the numbers up. Okay, now, okay, because it's five, five, five dollars I guess it's been automatically converted to pounds based on my geolocation. But this jacket is horrendous. Just that little detail there where there's a little bit of the white popping through underneath that kind of, um, what do you call it, the waistband, whatever thing that's called, isn't nice. But I think this this Rasty Jacket personally is horrendous. There's too much going on here, from the flag to the cherubs to the font to this racing card, like checkered print on the um, on the cuffs, on the waistband and the collar. Like, I don't like the, oh, what's it called? Oh, no, so what's it called, actually? Thing? Diamond quilted lining, genuine leather sleeves, wool and polyester blend fabric, classic fit, like, you could not get me to wear this ever. Like, what is that on the background? It's like a baby with a skull's head. Okay. What does it say? Already cancelled. Born cancelled. Born dead. Like, oh, this is horrendous. You know what it kind of looks like, kind of actually thinking about it? It looks kind of Virgil-y, isn't it? I wonder if Virgil designed this. It looks a little bit virgil if I'm not mistaken. R.I.P. the dead. But I'm not too sure if this might be virgil But I'm not going to put smart on his name. But yeah, the... The logo, I guess it is what it is. Um, I don't know. It just doesn't look that great, to be fair. It's very, very average. Not that good in, not that good in the slightest. And of course, for $550, you have to bring something a bit better, especially if you're kind of approaching human-made varsity jacket style. And who's going to wear this, man? A cancelled vest. Really? A vest. What's the vest going for? Two hundred dollars and one seventy six pounds. It's a vest that's got like a pile lining. Is that what do you call it? Pile? What do they call it? Sherpa lining on the inside with some badges on there. Um, you know, the front of it doesn't look too bad. The logo here on the front looks pretty cool. That actual font looks really nice. But that sunset, sunrise, fucking logo in the back, like no, thank you. No, thank you. Walking around with born cancel like that, rising up from your fucking ass. I'm okay for that, to be honest. Then you've got this uh, cancelled flannel that is reversible with a cancelled written in the hot like This is so old. This is so tired. That kind of Hollywood um, script. And then you're putting your own letters on there. Like, really tired. The best thing about this whole collection, for sure, are these uh, cancelled zipper cargos. These look really cool, to be fair in the black and the olive they're really nice but again 200 200 pounds for them probably not that worth it, especially when you consider other pants and what they go for from other established brands you've got this cancelled music tee that's awful this all over print is awful this cancelled with the x looks terrible it looks like something you'd buy from a project x flipping merch shop um this born cancelled you know with the music logo thing is garbage You'd be hard pressed to find anyone wearing this who hasn't been seeded or sent this for free. I can't f picture it. Even this, this stuff is probably better. And again, get rid of that print at the back. But this logo actually, which is a no vacancy in written in kind of like a newswire type thing with the line. It kind of, it kind of reminds me of Deadline, the, that old streetwear brand from back in the day that was founded by one of the old Supreme models. That kind of red line that kind of goes through with a no vacancy font written across is quite cool. And I really like the distress hoodie they've used, right? They've kind of, is it over dye, whatever that kind of technique is that you do where you kind of wash out with your shoulder. But this X thing that they got going on is horrible, horrendous. The whole thing is really, really bad. And again, it's a real, it's a real departure from the thing they did previously. So, hey, what could you do? You can't win everything. But personally, for me, not really something that I would kind of be on. Um, there's, of course, if I had, if I wanted to, and I had the um, bothering and I had the desire to go out and wear something 
with all this on there for sure this collection will definitely be the ones i definitely wear um especially that suit that suit is absolutely beautiful but the rest of it this new collection that they put together is really a waste of money to be honest i don't really see them selling any of this really anytime soon if people buy it fair play my my pick my key picks out of it is definitely the cargo pants the rest of it can kind of go missing for me mate not for me in the slightest um so yeah for me when it comes to no vacancy in born cancelled collection um it's a huge swing and a miss huge huge swing and a miss but again what do i know going on to actually good varsity jackets and tell you the difference of what a bad and a good varsity jacket looks like look at this collaboration between human made and undercover two former colleagues two very close friends human made obviously founded by nigo formerly of bape and undercover founded by un by jun takashi um who's also part of you know that whole streetwear urahara scene who actually founded and kind of set up the first nowhere store back in the day with nigo where he was selling some of his own stuff and nigo was selling some of his own stuff in their own store there um and of course everyone should know and be familiar what last orgy is and they've got another collection here coming out um, and this varsity jacket is absolutely phenomenal it's got a two on the front of it with the obviously with the logo there and then on the front right pocket you've got Junio and Nigo which obviously is John Takashi and Nigo last of you two fuel for the next generation since 1991 written on the in script and these three stars there on the right hand side of the sleeve maybe it's a freestyle general thing I'm not really too sure and on the back you got the great last orgy 2 and a bathing ape original kind of um ape logo from um, planet of the apes movie which i've always liked that old logo i think it looks absolutely incredible and you've got another t-shirt here featuring both of undercovers jun takashi and nigo with their backs turned saying last orgy fuel for next generation with both of them wearing what they actually make um jun takashi wearing an, a disorder i think it looks like um i think it's that oh what is it called what do you call them again? That's that Bane jacket, but with a hood on it. He's wearing one of those. And then Nigo has on a full denim suit that he always wears with that conductor's hat. That, you know, it's either really vintage Levi's that he's paid two grand for or it's stuff that he's made for himself from human made. And the t-shirt quality for human made, I purchased a few on sale. The quality is amazing. So much so I don't actually wear them day to day because the quality is so good. So if you're familiar or you're worried and you want to get a t-shirt, definitely check out human made. The back of the t-shirt is actually pretty cool also. It comes in a logo long sleeve print with and i've always been a stickler and a fan of this color combination with the pink print and the black and white pictures on a white long sleeve t-shirt i think they always look pretty sick it kind of reminds me of the old kind of sex pistols type merch and yeah i like everything about it so it says as follows here following a release back in february undercover and human made come together once again for a last orgy 2 collection oh yeah they had that coach jacket in it that i still haven't got a hold of that famous coach jacket that last orgy one do you guys remember that um let me see if i can get out for you here on the Google search, it was the last orgy to coach jacket. It was fucking one of the best things to come out of that collection. I remember it sitting in Dover Street for a while. I didn't go and pick it up and then it absolutely flew out and I couldn't get a hold of it again. Um, so yeah, you know, LOL to me, LOL to me. Um, going back to the collection itself. It says here, Japanese culture, late in the 90s, the last OG2 was a monthly column written by Young, Hiroshi Fujiwara, and Kanji for Japan Street Culture magazine, Taka, Takajima. This later became the late night show on television. Later in the 90s, Nigo and Jutakashi would succeed the duo with their own last OG2 column, where they also talked about things that they liked. With their success and reputation, Nigo and Jun would go into open an iconic store, Nowhere, which I mentioned before, where they would begin selling undercover and bape. It's funny that this is a thing, and this is what actual real influencing was back in the day. Real influencing was you just talking about the things that you loved even if you had to buy them yourself and then showing it off to the people right like hey i got this cool thing hey i got this cool hairbrush hey i got this cool razor hey i got this cool jacket this cool backpack whatever it may be and then you'd hope the brand would see and want to send you shit but nowadays influencers will buy something and lie that they got it for free so other brands can send them free stuff it's quite weird to see the rid of them or they'll just accept whatever crap comes through their inbox uh, you know these really crappy rubbish jewelry and headphone brands that want to sell you shit and then just wear those or, or kind of shield those because they, they think it makes them look successful it continues the undercover human made last or g2 collection uh, features varsity jacket long sleeve polo t-shirt and short sleeve t-shirt the items served to revive the designs from the 90s and are rendered in, vi in a variety of colorways take a look at the range below they're due to come out on october 20th yeah 
the, 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 the varsity jacket's going to be way too much money for me to afford right now. But for sure, I'm going to try and get the flipping long sleeve. That long sleeve with the white and pink print is absolutely beautiful. I'm definitely going to try to snag that if possible. But it's cool. They're kind of upping it every bit. Last time it was what? Last time it was this, right? Last time it was a t-shirt. And what was it? What was it last time? That's the original actual varsity jacket that they've obviously flipped and relaunched um, in purple. That was the original, original one. But back before they did what? They did this, right? They did a coach jacket. Oh, let me take that off the screen. They did this. They did a coach jacket. They did a t-shirt. And they did um, a hoodie. It looks like Verdi collaborated with that too, didn't he? Um, let's see. Last Orgy 2 collection. Let's see if somebody's got the actual original one. I would like to see what the first one, the first one actually looked like. I, m I can't remember what that first collection was. What included? I guess it was, was a coach jacket. I didn't know Verdi collaborated with that one. But yeah, these are some original images of the yeah, last orgy 2 featuring a young john takahashi and nigo from back in the day look how cool that looks fucking awesome additional images there also a young image of hiroshi fujiwara the absolute legend and my fucking idol I absolutely love hiroshi fujiwara you got verdi there with that annoying smile just want to push him off a building in it when he smiles like that i don't know maybe it's just me <laughs> hating but yeah oh that colorway is nice isn't it Oof, gotta love that colorway. That red and white and blue colorway is fucking booming with the little pink hits on the collar and the sleeve. Oof, that's fucking tough. That reminds me of that old Supreme Roses um, Varsity jacket from a few seasons ago. Do you remember that jacket? It's a quilted one. I actually got one, but, you know, I fucking lost it like an absolute idiot. Um, let me see if I can find it here. It's called Supreme Roses Quilted Jacket. I'm going to say it came out in like 2015. I'm not sure when it came out. This is the one, yeah, that one. When did it come out? Oh, 2013, not 2015. Wow, I was kind of in the range. Two years off, but it kind of reminds me of that jacket. This original blue one. It's absolutely one of my grails, man. So, so, so hard. Um, but yeah, big up Supreme regardless. Big up Last Orgy. That thing's going to come out on the 20th. Oh, not that stuff. Um, there we go. It's going to come out on October 20th. So keep an eye out for it when it does eventually come out, innit? Keep an eye out for it. Keep an eye out for it. Anyway, that is Action Show Show episode number 612. Thanks so much for tuning in. As per usual, click like, click subscribe if you like what I do. There'll be a song to see you out. If you're listening to an audio podcast, you're watching a video, just go to black. And I'll see you guys again soon. Take care. Peace.